Hello there, welcome. I'm back with a special Viserai deck today. It's called Turtle Burst Viserai, and it's all about this card right here, Arknight Ascendancy. And it reads that Arknight Ascendancy costs one less for each rune shard you control. So if you have six rune shards, it's free. And for every damage that you deal with Arknight Ascendancy, you get one rune shard back. So naturally, combos uh, with buffs pair really well with it. And if you even get to pull off a Slogism into Ascendancy, you'll get a very huge Dominate attack that'll pay you back plenty of rune shunts as well. Now, the game plan besides this is to obviously stack some rune shunts, defend as well as possible, and then do the combo over and over again. Now, there are certain matchups, like KO for example, that have a lot of armor so you either need a lot of those Arknight Ascendancy combos to chew through that armor or you just stack rune chance till you can kill them in one big attack. This becomes especially attractive if they don't run any arcane barrier which the KO doesn't. But for now we stick to our first to our first step of the game plan which is stacking rune chance. I decide to not fully block this out. I decide to take one damage, but get the rune chance going and also keep two of our power cards here. And then we draw into another one, which is Mordotide. Mordotide in combination with read runes is really, really strong. That's a two card six rune chance, and a rune chance is more worth uh, is worth more than just one damage. So it is a buff rate and a buff rate play. Our hands, the Grasps of the Arknight, they say uh, pay two plus uh, one for each rune chant you control and make a rune chant. Because of Modratite, we actually made a second one as well. And now we basically have the perfect start. We can set up that Arknight Ascendancy in the arsenal and just wait for the first buff we draw. As I said, the KO doesn't have arcane barriers, so we could also just use our Scepter, the Scepter of Pain, and ping him a bunch of times whenever we get to keep a card or an action point, or both, <laughs> ideally. And the Scepter of Pain will definitely hit. It says just deal one arcane damage, and if you do damage, then you get a rune chant. So if the plan is just to get as many rune chants as we can and or as we need to kill him in one blow, then every time we use the scepter gets us two points closer to that number. Hold the line is an exclusion a inclusion in the deck because it's really nice against KO and KO is a very popular deck right now. And as you see right here, it'll get us five value. And now we can either keep that become the Arknight and throw the Scepter, or maybe block with it, depending on what the Kayo is doing. Okay, since she's intimidating us, we won't get to keep it. Uh, we won't get to block with it. We need to keep it, and so we do. Uh, talking about armor at this point, though, um, you in a defensive deck like this. You want to use your armor not at just some random point. You want to use it whenever you can't block the damage through another source. So for example, right, right at that point we were just at, um, I had no cards in hand, he was coming in with 8. Using armor there wouldn't be, wouldn't be bad. I decide to keep it because I think the game is going to go long enough that there will be at least one other chance similar to this. But it wouldn't have been bad. Okay, um, Kayu does a mistake here I think and just passing without playing anything so I'll just undo for him and he gets to play his, his turn right and so we are only 28 rune chance off of killing him and he only did 9 damage so I, I'd say we were quite even in terms of uh, damage traded or value generated rather now Palpin coming in this will be another chance to use your armor efficiently because Palping Cam is in with Dominate more often than not. Uh, so if you can't block this out with, let's say, a direct from Arsenal, 
you'll take damage um, and you could just instead put some armor in there. But still, the game is going to go way longer. I'll prefer to keep it now. Now in our turn, we do have a buff in hand and the Ascendancy in our arsenal. So we could send it in for 8. Force this whole armor. Unfortunately for us then, uh, we wouldn't actually get any damage through from the Ascendancy itself. So we wouldn't get any rune chance back. So instead of throwing this, we could also just get the blocking value out of Runic Reckoning. And especially with the CNC coming in, I just say, let's block twice here. Play the read the runes out. We will have, I believe, 13 rune chance at the end of this turn. So we could say Kaio is at, let's say, 25 HP while we're at 27. So we're balling. We are balling. Also have all our armor up. Runeblood Barrier is a, another really nice tool that our deck has access to. It's that yellow card down there and it says that uh, if you play it, create 4 rune chance and till the start of your next turn, whenever you would get dealt damage, you instead lose a rune chant. Now I'm going to do exactly what I was talking about before. I wouldn't be able to block out the pulping completely, so I just decide to throw in some armor now. And now we might even try to keep the come to fight as well, so we can come in with the ascendancy for 11. This way we might actually leak some damage and get some rune chance back. And this also just brings us closer to where we want to get. We'll heal drop lower, we'll generate more rune chance. Even though we are not actually blocking anything uh, with those two cards, we're getting closer to our goal. And arguably a little uh, in a little more um, efficient way than the Kayo does by just dealing more damage. And now the ideal situation happened. He actually doesn't present more damage on a card on a hand we want to keep. He goes for setup and whenever you can, and that's not only important for this deck or this matchup, whenever you can push damage while the opponent wants to keep the hand, that's just ideal. Um, because now he's basically forced to take what we're throwing at him. Uh, or he sacrifices what he just did, setting up an agility token and multiple mites. For the Quicken token, we don't really have a use. Um, in very niche cases, it'll, it could become useful, but it's not. It's not useful to play around it. Right, so on that first Ascendancy, he'll usually let's just take Rune Chance. Maybe he has a blue to spare, which he put into pitching. Um, and then he'll put all the armor in, which would in his case be either 6 or 7 if he finds the tunic to be worth it. And then a block from hand. So let's say he's blocking for 9 on the 11. Uh, we get 2 damage through to Rune Chance back. So that's quite, quite a good uh, value offer there. And then... Whenever we throw the next Ascendancy, his armor will be further depleted. So he doesn't have to flashback. He has one block less on Bronebreaker and Scapskins. So let's say another one is coming in for 8. Then he can only block 5 on this one. If it's coming in for 11, he only can block 5. We're getting 6 damage through and 6 rune chance back. So the value is basically just insane. And we also force him to block with a card from hand here, which means that's a blue he can't pitch in his next turn. Oh, and it seems like he decides to not use the Scowling here. Uh, from my experience, that's just uh, wrong, because you won't get the Scowling value really in this matchup, uh, other than the block. And denying two more rune chance here is very good, because in the Viseray deck, a lot of cards just, just synergize with the rune chance you already have. So yeah, just getting, taking more speed out of that, that combo train is really good. So now we get another 5 rune chance, which basically means 
Caius on 14 HP while we're on 25 and we draw into a really nice hand for setting up ourselves. Now these cards we usually don't want to block with, we want to play them um, because they do generate quite a lot of rune chants. So now we are on the other side of the, the metal here and are basically forced to take damage because our hand isn't meant to block. Um, only the rattle bones is basically to spare here. But that's fine because we are still contributing to our game plan and we are only facing vanilla damage here. Um, at, at a point like this in your game against Kayu, you should keep in mind what kind of finishing blows he still has. In our case, I think it's still two cast bones and two blood rushes. And he also only, no, he played two palpings already. And then you should also think about reckless swings. So Kayu plays it most of the time at least one. So yeah, don't go too low because of the, the palpings with dominate and... In any case, stay above 2 HP if you need to attack him to kill him, because 2 HP is where Reckless Swing will kill you. Also, I decide to not block with the Rattle Bones here, because Rattle Bones can tutor me a attack action card from my graveyard. So I'll just put that into my arsenal, and whenever I will draw a good buff, I'll just pitch a blue into Rattle Bones, get that Arknight Ascendancy back, and then we're good to go again. Um, Viserai, by the way, uh, its hero power is that whenever you've already played an action card this game, or I think actually a non-attack action card this game, and you play a rune blade action, you will get a rune chant. Because we played Mordu Tide at the beginning of the turn, this one rune chant actually turns into two. Oh, okay, it seems like I've actually chosen to play out the Rattle Bones. And there's an argument to be made here... Um, First, because it does create an extra rune shot because of Mordrotide. And then we actually get to put on some pressure onto Kayo now. So we're throwing a 9th blade for 9 and 11 rune shots with it, which won't kill him, but it will put Kayo even lower and it will force him to give us cards out of his hand. And while you, in quite a bit of situations, you wouldn't want to do this because. After that, you are low on rune chance, and as I've been saying before, lots of your cards need rune chance to function in the deck you have. Um, right now, we have the incantation up and on board, um, the guy right here, and uh, this will get us a rune chant at the beginning of our turn anyway. And also, playing ninth blade will generate another two rune chants uh, through the Viserai and Mototide trigger, so we have quite a few up anyways. And now it seems like the Kayo is still not willing to give us his headpiece, but that's honestly completely fine for us, especially now that he gets gets even lower. If he should drop to 5 here, that means we only need to deal 5 arcane damage this game, and he's done for. we're also low we do have quite some armor up though and now we kind of need to figure out what's the best way to kill him from here on out and i guess one way would be to just wait two turns so the rune blood incantation gives us two more rune chance and then we have some attack that just comes in for free because of the rune chance and the chance will just kill him because he doesn't have ab and up until then, we'll just block. Okay, unfortunately for us, Kayo has a blood rush now, so there will be quite some damage coming. 
and our hand does not block well uh, as well at all. We have three two blocks here, um, and we don't have six rune chants up. Six rune chants would be really cool because with the spellbound creepers, our shoes, we could instantly play the Zonata Galaxia, which can fetch us another rune blood barrier, which we played before, which just just says if we get damaged, rune chants get destroyed instead. Uh, but yeah, now we don't have that option because our rune chant count is too low. So. Um, going for that aggressive play earlier might not pay off here. Um, right, and now I believe I sh can just invest some armor here and see what's, what's coming next from his side. Because we are very likely to get those, those blocks in from the hand anyways. And now we also get to crack our balance because, yeah, another great tool we still have up here is whenever he draws two cards for the rest of the turn, we can destroy that headpiece we have and draw an extra card. So that's really important into KO. Yeah, so... Oh, and mm, even more um, unfortunate draws here. So this is getting close for sure. We should at this point um, have a look into activating the bloodied oval, our shield over there. Um, it it's only blocks for one if we're lower than the opposing hero. So taking three here might not be the worst idea. Though if we do... Yeah, right. We don't really have a good, good hand either. We could pitch two to ping with the scepter and then... Nah, that's just not working out either. I guess keeping the Sonata here for the Arsenal could pay off somehow. Even that, in retrospect, there's I don't think anything that'll that the Sonata can. Maybe okay, maybe in a pinch we could pitch an extra blue to get the to use the the the, the, the shoes over there and get that rune blood barrier out. But I think the most safe play would have been here to just block. Um, one more card into that east strike and just preserve one more damage. Now we have quite a few attack action cards that can save us here. Um, we have two more blue amplify of amplify the Arknights and one more red of those. And even the Arknight Ascendancy would nearly come in for free right now. And we just need to shoot this attack. We don't even have to worry about the regular swing because four rune chunks will kill Kayo at this point. Um, Dread Triptych is another attack we could just fire because again the rune blood incantation on board will give us our fourth rune chant. So if we can survive this turn, um, just using the tunic counter and the two pitch from the yellow card in our hand will make us be able to throw the Dread Triptych. Fortunately. KO rolled the scapskin leathers and got another extra action point. So we will be able to convert his full hand here. And that's at least... That will be at least 12 damage. Because the worst KO does usually is throw two sixes at you. And it's likely that there'll be more. There's also a my token active, so we should like count for 13 damage. There is... The possibility that one of the attacks is a swing big then it's 15 damage and we're also getting intimidated on top of that so it is really not looking good right now because now there is not even the option to flash in the oh wait there is we have a sonata in in our arsenal we could actually flash in a rune blood barrier in blocking with the ninth blade and then pitching the Sonata from hand into the Creepers and then playing the Sonata from our arsenal and paying three more. But then we would have what is seven block on field and then we don't have any rune chance so, so that can't be the play. Um, I believe just blocking seven here. So very unlucky draw sequence here, all the two blocks coming in. And then we are facing another seven. 
which we're only able to get with armor 4 out if we want to keep the tunic. I mean, to be fair, we only have to stay alive. We can go and drop down to one because, oh, I believe there might be one palping left. But at this point, well, the, the armor, it, it doesn't matter when we invest the armor anyways. And another angle we have though now is using the Sonata in our arsenal to get a Looming Doom. And Looming Doom will deal two damage to KO at the end of our turn each for each counter or each each time till it has no counters. And since we were forced to keep that slog as many ways, we might as well um, use it to pitch now. So in the end, the Sonata does pay off. Now we don't have to um don't not even have to keep a an extra card to attack him with. We can just survive another turn and win um for sure we still have two armor block up we've seen a lot of two blocks but we see three more so that's not good um as i've been saying before 12 damage is if he has go again i mean that's that's another situation here he could just not have to go again and we we walk away happily oh but he does have to go again Okay. I'm I'm seeing one more out though. Okay, nice. That's one pulping gun. Or the last one rather. Um hold the line, the defense reaction on our hand will get activated if he draws two or more cards in one turn. And Wild Ride already drew him a card and discarded one. So if he plays another Wild Ride style card, we get that three more block on this hold the line. If he's attacking with a with a six year though, we're just dead. But that is a unlucky. Oh, and that's a that's a draw card. That's a draw card. Baffing's coming in for eight now. And yeah, we're exactly able to block eight, and that's <laughs> that's game. Oh, that, that poor Kayo. Yep, this is blocking five. We have three on board already. And at the end of our turn, Looming Doom will kill him. And there's no way for him to prevent that. Yeah, so Bearfangs also drew a card and discarded one. So in total, he drew two cards this, this turn and this activates hold the line. Sweet. Okay, so... Um, yeah, KO had, had quite a good sequence of turns here and we... Did get quite unlucky in drawing as many low blocks there as we did. Uh, he did have Reckless Ring in Arsenal as well, but yeah, as I said, it doesn't matter if we don't really attack him. Um, so maybe throwing that ninth blade there in the middle of the game wasn't the play. Instead, we could have uh, gone a more defensive route and played out the Runeblood Barrier here and there, waited for another Arc Knight Ascendancy and just get the value of this. So I think it wouldn't have like mattered much. The difference would have wouldn't have been great. And if we did get to draw better there, um, because as you see, we, we did have like the reacts in, in the deck as, as well. Uh, we could have just won this more safely, more cleanly. But still a good game. Um, there will be more of this Viserai deck um tomorrow and the day after that. So yeah, make sure to leave a subscribe and if you want to see other games I've playing I've played a lot of KO myself you are welcome to check that out and I'll see you later